I'm Allie, and I'm super excited that you're here with us today. Last week, we celebrated the Easter story, and this week, we're jumping back into our sermon series of Suit Up with the Armor of God. We can put on the armor of God every day by doing these three things. It's when we love always, when we trust God no matter what, and when we make wise choices. So I know you do that every single week, but I'm gonna ask you to stand up and do it with me again this week, because the more we do it, the more we're gonna remember it, and this is something you don't wanna forget. So stand up. We can center our hearts on God when we love always, when we trust God no matter what, and when we make wise choices. All right, good job, guys. Before we jump into worship, I'm gonna ask us to just quiet our hearts and to pray to God before we learn anything. Lord God, thank you so much for your love for us. Help me to love you and to love others. Help me to trust you no matter what, and help me to make wise choices. God, I love you and I wanna worship you with all that I am. In your name, amen. All right, guys. Well, our hearts are ready. We remembered our core values. We've talked with God, so now let's worship.
Today we live, today we breathe Today we know that we are strong when we are weak Today we trust, we overcome Take every chain that kept us slaves and throw them off We're not waiting for permission We defy our inhibition Like our middle name is fearless What an awesome time worshiping together. Good job, you guys. So we are now going to take some time to take a look at the book. The book we're talking about is the, the Bible, of course. So you guys, before we learn anything new, I want to take some time to review. So the very first piece of armor that we learned about was the, the belt of truth. We wear this when we trust that God's word is 100% true. This piece of armor also helps us to hold up all the other pieces of armor. The next thing we learned about was the, sh the breastplate of righteousness. This protects our hearts so that we can make wise choices. The third piece of armor that we learned about was the shoes of peace. Remember these spikes? They help us to stand firm in what God says and it helps us to move forward even when we're afraid. The next piece of armor that we learned about was the shield of faith. When we have faith in God and trust his promises, it protects us from our head all the way down to our toes. The very last piece that we've already learned about is the helmet of salvation. This protects our heads so that all of the thoughts that are in our mind are good and true and from God. 
We wear this when we accept this free gift that God has given us of being saved. Jesus saved us, and that changes everything about how we think about the world. Today, we're going to learn about a very special piece of armor because, well, this next piece of armor doesn't just protect us, it also helps us to attack, to attack our enemy so that we can win because in Jesus, we've already got the victory. And Jesus is the main person in our story today. If you don't have your Bibles, I want you to go and get it. You're going to be opening up to Matthew chapter 4. Go ahead and pause this video now to go get your Bible. All right, we're taking a look at the book. Matthew chapter 4, verses 1 through 11. It says the Holy Spirit led Jesus into the desert. There the devil tempted him. After 40 days and 40 nights of going without eating, Jesus was hungry. The tempter came to him. He said, if you are really the son of God, then tell these stones to become bread. Jesus answered him, it is written, man doesn't live only on bread. He also lives on every word that comes from the mouth of God. That's found in Deuteronomy 8.3. Then the devil took Jesus to the holy city. He had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you really are the son of God, he said, throw yourself down because the Bible says the Lord will command his angels to take good care of you. They will lift you up in their hands then you won't trip over a stone. Hmm. Jesus answered him, It is also written in the Bible, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. In Deuteronomy 6, 16. Finally, the devil took Jesus to a very high mountain. He showed him all the kingdoms of all the world and all their glory. If you bow down to me, and worship me, he said, I will give you all of this. Jesus said to him, get away from me, Satan. It is written, worship the Lord your God. He is the only one you should serve. Deuteronomy 6, 13. Then the devil left Jesus. Angels came and took care of him. Boys and girls, this is one of my favorite stories about Jesus because it shows Jesus coming against the devil. They are fighting against each other and the devil is using all of his tricks to try and defeat Jesus. But here's the thing, Jesus won because Jesus suited up with the sword of the spirit. You guys, the last piece of the armor of God is the sword of the spirit. Jesus used the Bible to come against the devil. He used God's word to cut down all of the devil's temptations. Everything the devil tried to use against Jesus cut down with the Bible. See, the sword of the spirit isn't just for Jesus. It's for you and it's for me too. We can suit up with the armor of God by using the, swords, the sword of the Spirit. And that's what our big idea says today. So I want you guys to all say this with me. Ready? Suit up with the sword of the Spirit. One more time, because I know you didn't say it the first time. Suit up with the sword of the Spirit. Good job, you guys. Now, Am I talking about carrying a lightsaber around with you every day? No, but it sounds kind of like a cool idea to me. We're not talking about suiting up with actual swords. Remember the armor of God isn't an armor that you actually put on your body. The armor of God is something that you put on your heart. You put on your mind. It's something spiritual, which means we're not actually talking about lightsabers. We're talking about the Bible. See, the Bible says that God's word is sharper than any double-edged sword. 
which means it's even cooler than a lightsaber, guys. I don't know. I think that this is going to be your best weapon in your life than any toy lightsaber could be. And you can pick up your sword of the spirit by doing three things. The first thing is by reading your Bible. Hmm. That sounds like a pretty good idea to read this book. <laughs> the more you read it, the more you find out about God. The more you find out about his love, the more you find out about his power, the more you find out what God can actually do. And the more you read these things, the more you know them. So the second thing that you can do to use your sword of the spirit is to memorize scripture. We do this every single week. We memorize verses together. Speaking of which, you guys have a verse that you've been working on for six weeks. So I really hope you have this one memorized. Let's all stand up because we're going to practice using our sword together when we remember this verse. It says to put on all of God's armor so that you can remain strong against the devil's evil plans. Ephesians 6, 11. Let's say it again. Let's practice using our swords. Ready? Put on all of God's armor so that you can remain strong against the devil's evil plans. Ephesians 6, 11. Good job, guys. So you can read your Bible. You can memorize what the Bible has to say. But there's a third thing. You can speak it. You can say the promises of the Bible. You can say the powerful verses from the Bible. Now, in our story from today, the devil tried to use this powerful tool. He tried to use the word of God for his own good. But here's the thing, guys. This sword isn't the sword of the devil. This sword isn't even the sword of Ali. It's not the sword of Jude or Mackenzie or Maddie. It's not even the sword of the church. This sword is the sword of the Holy Spirit. That means that this sword was given to us from God so that we can use it for God. We don't use what's in this Bible for our own good. We don't use this to get our way in a fight. We use this to honor God. We use this to love God. And we use this to love his people. Because that is what this sword is all about. It's cutting down everything that comes against God. And it's making sure that we know that he is God over all things. Because it's the, it's the sword of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit. You guys, we have a God that is a living God. Just like the Bible says that the Word of God is living and active. Our God is living and active too. So today we're going to take some time to stop, to pause, and to listen what the Holy, to what the Holy Spirit has to say to us. Because if he's living and he has words for us to hear, I know he's going to speak to you today. So take two minutes and just quiet yourself and listen to what he has to say. I'll call you back when we're done.
All right, guys, let's come back in. We're going to close in prayer. I would like for you guys to have just some time to repeat after me as we talk to God together. Ready? Close your eyes. Bow your heads. Get everything out of your hands. Let's talk to Jesus. Hi, God. Thank you for speaking to us today. Help us to take up the sword of the Spirit and to put on the full armor of God so that we can stay strong against the enemy's attacks. We love you and we choose you in your name. Amen. You guys, this was one of my favorite lessons and I'm so glad I got to share it with you today. We have some super fun activities that are gonna help you to practice using your sword. So hang tight, cause here they come. I never get tired of hearing that story about how Jesus used the sword of the spirit to overcome temptation. It is so powerful and every time I hear it, I learn something brand new. And I think that's gonna be true for you guys today. Well, in order for us to learn something new and dive deeper into this story, we're going to do small groups. Parents, I'm going to ask you to be super intentional during this time as you involve yourself into what your kids have just learned. So we do three things in small groups. The first thing we do is that we do prayer requests. You're going to write these down on a piece of paper and you're going to put that piece of paper on your refrigerator so that you can see it all week long and be reminded of how you can pray for your family. The second thing that we do is discussion questions. You are going to be asking each other these questions and talking deeper about what this story meant to each person in your family. The third thing we do are devotionals. You're going to take time to really actually practice how to use the sword of the spirit because we believe the Bible is the sword of the spirit. It's sharper than any double-edged sword. It can do so many things, so many powerful things. And so what a great opportunity for you guys to practice using that piece of armor together. All right, I'm done talking. You're gonna see in just a second all of the information that you need for small group time. Go ahead and pause the video and really lean into this time of encountering the story on a deeper level. Today's story was all about how Jesus used the truth of God's word to overcome temptation. So today we have an encounter activity for you that's called truth or temptation. Easy enough. All you're going to need are these truth or temptation cards from our website at go to the well dot church backslash kids under our parent resource tab. Once you download these cards, you're going to get all of your family into one room. You're going to decide which side of the room is truth and which side of the room is temptation. Now, one person from your family is going to read the card. And then after you've read it, everyone else in the family is going to go to what side they think it is. If it's a truth, they're going to go to the truth side. If it's a temptation, they're going to go to the temptation side. Once you've gone through all of these cards, then if you want it, you can make it up your own. It's that easy. So on your mark, get set, go play. The sword of the spirit is more powerful than any real sword ever could be. And I want to make sure that this week you have time to practice using your sword of the spirit. So for this encounter activity, you're going to need a plastic cup. You're going to need some plastic knives and you're going to need a Sharpie. Most importantly, you're going to need to have your sword, your Bible. Here's what you do. First, you're going to take your plastic knife and your Sharpie, and you're gonna write one Bible reference on each plastic knife. These are gonna act like your swords. Once you've written a reference down, you're gonna put them all in your plastic cup, and you're gonna put that cup in a place where everyone in the family can see it. 
throughout your week, whether it's at breakfast time, maybe at lunch, maybe it's after you finish homework or before you go to bed, whenever it works best for your family, you are gonna draw one of your swords and you're gonna read the reference on that sword in your Bible. Now, when you read that scripture, I want you to ask these three questions. First, what did I discover that's new? What is something brand new that I just learned about the sword of the spirit? Second, I want you to ask yourself how that piece of scripture made you feel. Did it scare you? Were you excited? Was it something that made you happy? Did it, was it something that made you a little scared? How'd you feel? Third, you are going to ask yourself, what should I do now that I know this scripture? Should I share this scripture with someone else? Is the scripture asking me to go and do something? I want you to talk about those three questions with your family as you draw your swords. Now, on your mark, get set, draw. I had so much fun learning about the Sword of the Spirit with you today. Now, it's your turn to practice using your swords, whether it's doing the encounter activities, whether it's doing your daily devotions, or whether it's popping on the Zoom calls for our devos on Tuesdays. Whatever it is, don't neglect your sword. Practice it, practice using it so that you can overcome temptation. I'll see you guys later.